Hi, it's time for Rain Shorts, and it's cold this morning in Georgia. I want to show you how I'm going to attempt to get my black soldier fly larva composter to operate through the winter using an old blanket and an LED light bulb. Stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the green shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. The colder temperatures have the soldier fly larva moving slowly. The larva mature more slowly during colder months, ensuring that adults don't emerge. Still, I'll need to keep temps above freezing if I want them to live, and closer to 80 degrees Fahrenheit if I want them to continue to compost. The first thing I'm gonna do is move the composter closer to my house. Let's see how heavy this is. Oh, I got it. I'm gonna put the composter up against the house next to one of the vents coming out of the crawl space. This will allow the ambient temperature under the house to help keep the composter warmer. It's also gonna get me closer to outside power. I'm removing the egg laying cardboard. Won't need these until spring. I'm also adding a rotisserie chicken remnant to give the larva plenty of food. I'm installing the 60 watt replacement LED in a corded socket and duct taping it to a scrap of sheet metal to keep it out of the compost. I'm stuffing leaves underneath and in the gaps to help insulate from the cold. So we'll let this sit for a couple hours and then come back and see if our internal ambient temperature has improved. All right, it's about 12 hours later. It's dark out and you can see the glow coming from the black soldier fly larva composter. Let's open it up and see where our ambient temperatures are. The chicken seems to be a little lower in the box. Let's get out the thermal camera, take a look. The light bulb is running at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and the ambient temperature of the compost is just over 60 degrees. We'll see how this goes. It's gonna get down to 27 degrees Fahrenheit tonight, and that would be enough cold to kill these soldier fire larvae if I can't keep them above freezing. But we'll come back out here tomorrow and take a look and see if they're still living. Alexa, tell me the forecast. Currently, in Lilburn it's 25 degrees with clear skies and sun. You can expect more of the same today, with a high of 47 degrees and a low of 25 degrees. All right, so that's what we're dealing with. Let's check the temp. The LED has warmed the metal plate to 80 degrees and held the ambient temperature at 62. Check out what's underneath the metal plate. So this is producing enough heat to show a little bit of activity in the soldier fly larva and obviously they're finding the heat as well but I'd like to see if we could get a little more action. So I'm gonna take this to the next level. And to do that, I'm gonna use a heating pad. Let's see, does it say, don't use this with black soldier fly larva? Nope, good to go. I'm actually gonna take the heating pad out of this cover. and get rid of the foam pad as well. But I'm not gonna put it in the bin unprotected. I've got a scrap of used rubber pond liner, and I'm gonna use that to wrap the heating pad. This stuff is filthy, but consider where it's going. I just need enough to cover front and back. Now it's time to install. Of 
course I couldn't find my trowel, so I'm going to use a machete and carefully remove enough compostable material to inset my heating pad. I'm going to remove material where I know I've got live soldier fly larvae as well because I want to put them back in in the hot zone. Looks like a good many of them had moved underneath the heat of the light bulb. I'm going to switch to a shovel. I got the bottom of my grandfather's garden spade here and this will be perfect for scooping in and getting those soldier fly larvae out without hurting them. The fact that they're still moving means my light bulb was working. I just don't think it was quite hot enough. Once I've got this hollowed out, I'm going to install the heating pad. Run the excess cord down into the collection bin. Pull the plug down the side. And then connect the power. Making sure the plug connection is protected from the weather. I'm going to use the low setting here to start. I imagine that's going to be enough. These guys aren't dealing with back pain. I'm going to let this warm up for a few minutes and then check the temperature. The white area of the heat map is running just over 100 degrees. Now that the heat's on, let's put the compost and larva back in. Here's our chicken. I want to make sure I know where the chicken is. I want to come back and check that. Okay, I'm going to close the lid and let this thing warm up so these guys can crawl down. All right, so I left this overnight to warm up. Let's see where the temperature is. Rained, blanket is wet. One of the last things I did before I put this thing to bed was to cut a couple strips from my pond liner to lay over the top to kind of hold some of the heat inside like it's doing its job. It'll also help keep the condensation on the inside of this versus up on the lid where it can drip down onto the frame. All right, let's check the temperature here. I also want to check on the activity of the soldier fly larva. I'm going to pull up the chicken here and see if we've got something going on. Ooh, steam. I'm definitely seeing soldier fly larvae that are moving a lot faster than they were when they were cold. Let's see what the temperature is down here. The optimal temperature range for black soldier fly larvae is 85 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so this should work perfectly. Okay, this is what I wanted to see. Let's go over here underneath where some of the pumpkin was, and we're seeing larvae that are a lot more active, like they would be during the summer. They're digging down, they don't like this light. And get away from the sunlight. All right, so I think this is going to work. You want to make sure that it's safe. I'm going to actually ch check this carefully for a couple of days before I just leave it alone and let it run. But I am going to get these guys some fresh pumpkin.
cover them back up. While the light bulb produced enough heat to keep these guys alive, keep it from freezing solid in here, it wasn't enough for them to thrive. I am convinced that the heating pad is gonna keep them viable all winter long and keep them composting. Now the adults won't be able to hatch, it's just too cold for that. But I think I can keep these guys working so I can continue to compost things like meat during the winter. I really appreciate all of you that are watching and commenting on these videos. I'm having a lot of fun making them for you. And hearing the comments and suggestions that you all have to improve upon these designs. I wanted to use this opportunity to tell you something significant that's happening in the life of the Mills family this year. We're building a house. Of course, it's going to be a sustainable home. And of course, there will be videos. I'm separating this content to its own unique channel because I want to stick with DIY content here. The new channel is called The Green Shorts Greenhouse, and you can find it by clicking on the link above. The Green Shorts Greenhouse channel will be all about uncovering what makes a greenhouse green. The technology and techniques that go into making a home that is energy efficient, more sustainable, and a healthier and happier place to live. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. And subscribe for a new DIY video almost every Friday.